three, two, one. Welcome back to Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. In this clip, we, we are back talking to Mr. Tommy James from Tommy James and the Shondells, talking about his book, Meet a Mob in the Music, a wild story of how he got a record deal in the 60s with Roulette Records owned by the notorious Genovese crime family. Think of a story that meets Goodfellas and Jersey Boys. Don't miss out on his amazing story and the music that shaped a generation. Songs like Hanky Panky, Moni Moni, Dragging the Line, I Think We're Alone Now. We're going to talk about it all. Hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Now, let's give a big welcome to Mr. Tommy James. It all starts now. Don't touch that dial. Is, is 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 a wild it really is it's like in the book a hell of a ride honestly uh, uh you know when you do an autobiography the only problem is you actually have to tell the truth so uh, uh it's uh, me the mob and the music basically uh uh was a was a book we we were going to originally call crimson and clover and we were going to talk about writing the hits talk about uh, you know being in the studio and it would have been a fun book but um, we got about a third of the way into it and realized that if we don't tell the roulette story, which really is the story, um, that we are going to cheat ourselves and everybody else. But um, I was a little nervous about doing that because um, uh, in the roulette story is, um, you know, we're talking about a lot of very notorious people. And uh, so at any rate, uh, I was a little nervous because a lot of these guys were still walking around. This is back in, you know, like 04 and 05. And uh, so uh, Martin Fitzpatrick and I put the uh, project on a shelf for a couple of years until the last of the um, roulette regulars, as I called them, uh, passed away. And that happened in December of 05, actually. And... Um, so we figured we could finish the story, and we did. And as soon as we did uh, finish Me, the Mob, and the Music, we started getting sounded on from uh, movie people and the Broadway people and uh, just a whole slew of people who uh, wanted to take the story further. And uh, so there's going to be a movie, um, um, you know, coming up. We'll talk about that a little later. But basically the story is uh, uh, the gist of the book is uh, an autobiography with about two thirds of it devoted to our very sometimes scary relationship, but tumultuous and crazy relationship with Roulette Records, uh, the label we had most of our hits on. And the reason it was scary and tumultuous is because unbeknownst to us, uh, when we signed with Roulette, uh, Roulette, in addition to being a functioning, um, uh, pretty good in, you know, indie label, uh, was also a front for the Genovese crime family in New York. And of course, that made life really interesting for us. Uh, while we were hanky panky and moany moany, and this very dark and sinister story was going on behind us that we really couldn't talk about. So um, uh, that, uh, that was the story, basically, of our relationship with Roulette. My baby does the hanky panky. It, to let the audience know about this, Hanky Panky originally, you put it out you, you, before you, you sh basically that song is what got you in cahoots. Well, with that's Mars. right. The this, this story of Hanky Panky really goes back to uh, 1964. And um, uh, I recorded Hanky Panky in my hometown of Niles, Michigan, a little town in the Midwest. Um, I recorded it in a radio station. Uh, the uh, uh, one of the jocks, Jack Douglas on uh, WNIL, uh, was starting a little regional record label and asked if we would uh, uh, would record for him. And of course, in about three seconds, I said, "Hell yes!" And uh, so uh, my 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 group, uh, the Shondells, and I went into the studio and recorded uh, several tracks for Jack. And uh, one of them happened to be Hanky Panky, which was uh, a song we had seen another group play uh, in a teen club 
and saw the reaction to it and everybody hitting the dance floor. And so we said, that's a song we should do. So we did it and it was released and was sort of half a hit. We had no distribution, of course. And uh, so, but in our little, we were big fish in a small pond. And um, so uh, we were on all the jukeboxes and, but the record kind of came and went and, uh, uh, you know, didn't, didn't do a hell of a lot, but, but you know, put us on the map. And uh, so when I graduated from high school in 1965, I took my band on the road and we played dance clubs uh, in the, uh, in the Midwest. And in early 66, uh, we're playing this dumpy little club in Janesville, Wisconsin. And right in the middle of my two weeks, uh, the guy gets shut down by the IRS for not paying his taxes. So uh, we got let go, of course, and uh, sent back home to Niles, Michigan, feeling like real losers. Yeah. And as soon as I get home, uh, that's how God works, by the way, because as soon as I got home, uh, I got the call that changed my life. Um, it seems that Hanky Panky uh, had been bootlegged they got such a reaction to it. Somebody picked it up out of a record cemetery and played it on the radio. And there was such a reaction to it uh, that uh, it they bootlegged 80,000 copies, a local distributor, and sold them in 10 days. And we were sitting at number one uh, in the city of Pittsburgh, nowhere else. And so uh, they tracked me down. And it was just such a... Uh, a miracle that I was home at that exact moment because we'd been fired from the club. And um, and he filled me in on what had happened. And so uh, it was a fellow from the distributorship and he uh, told me that we were sitting at number one in the city of Pittsburgh. And then uh, shortly after that, a local promoter called and asked if I would come to Pittsburgh and do some radio and some shows. Uh, I couldn't put the original band back together. So uh, I went alone and with the uh, uh, producer of the record, Jack Douglas. And so I went to Pittsburgh and uh, sure enough, we're sitting at number one and outside the city limits, I'm nobody. But as soon as I cross into Pittsburgh, I'm a rock star. So uh, it was just an, an, an amazing tale. I got to Pittsburgh. Uh, did some shows, and I picked up uh, a local group to be the Shondells. And a week later, we're in New York City selling the master of Hanky Panky to a major label. Uh, we got a yes from Columbia. We got a yes from RCA. Got a yes from Atlantic, um, uh, Epic. Uh, and finally, the last place we took the record to was Roulette. And... So I went to bed that night feeling like we were going to be with one of the majors and, uh, you know, major corporate labels. And so I'm just feeling great. So uh, the next morning, I start getting calls at our hotel uh, telling us that, uh, you know, sorry, Tom, we got to pass, like from about four different labels. And I, I finally said, what the hell's going on? Jerry Wexler up at Atlantic told us the truth that Morris Levy from Roulette Records had called all the other labels and backed everybody down, scared the hell out of them. He says, this is my record, back off. And they did, even Columbia. So um, anyway, that's the way he talked. <laughs> so uh, uh, at any rate, we were apparently gonna be on Roulette Records. That was the first offer I couldn't refuse. So I met Morris that day and uh, Morris, who was the head of the label, and a very notorious character, I might add. Um, uh, you know, he was about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, he was a big guy, and uh, he, was every, he was right out of the movies, right out of central casting. I'm not kidding. And he shook your hand. It was like grabbing a hold of a catcher's mitt. You know, it's just a huge hand. It's just a big guy. And... Uh, so at any rate, um, we were going to be on roulette. But strangely enough, they took the record to number one and number one in the United States and number one all over the world. It was uh, 
one of the biggest records of the summer of 66 in the whole country. And uh, uh, I can tell you right now that if we had gone with one of the corporate labels, we would have been lucky to have been a one hit wonder, especially with a record like Hanky Panky, a fluky record like that. And the competition would have been horrible. And uh, we would have been lucky to come out with one hit record. At Roulette, they actually needed us. And so I got the red carpet rolled out, uh, the key to the candy store, yeah. and everything I wanted. Uh, of course, getting paid was another issue. Let the audience know, uh, 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 Morris, his character is basically based on the Sopranos character, Hesh. They based that character from Morris, correct? That's true. Yeah. That's right. So The, the uh, so, older yeah. Jew Jewish record promoter who... Uh, uh, was was stealing from everybody. Yeah, and Moish. They called him Moish. So but, Moish was Hesh. But in reality, the real Morris Levy was a lot. They made Hesh a little softer than the real guy. Oh, much. A little older, too. At what point is it cheaper for him to settle it another way? What about these charges? They're not true. They wouldn't have been filed yesterday if I had joined the witness protection program. That was Mr. Tommy James, and we'll be releasing more clips of this interview. Make sure you check out Me, The Mob, and The Music. Links are in the description down below, or click right above here, and post your comments. We always love to hear from you. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to catch this episode right now and edit it, join our Members Only Club right here on YouTube. In the meantime, remember, who loves you, baby? We do. Thanks for watching.